Hi. Quite often it happens that a simple component evolves and becomes a separate page in our Angular apps. Before Angular 16, the transformation to the rooted components would require some additional refactoring efforts from our side. This is because some data that the component might depend on cannot be provided via component inputs anymore. And very often we retrieve this data from the Angular router. So we have to inject it, we have to maintain it and mock it in our Angular unit tests. Fortunately, the modern Angular allows us to bind some parameters from the router state with component inputs. In this video, I will show you how you can do that, how to stay reactive and how it might work with signal inputs and RxJS internal package. My name is Dmitry Marinsky and my mission is to help people to become advanced Angular developers who really understands how things are working and what they are doing. If it is your first time on my channel, you can check it out later and see which topics I covered in the past. But now let's focus on the component input bindings in Angular Router. All right, let's very quickly recap how Angular handles routing in our Angular apps. So let's imagine that we enter the following URL in our browser. Angular takes this URL and tries to find a corresponding router config using the path property. Once it is found, Angular creates an instance of the activated root class that cares for handling the router state changes. If you try to investigate the activated root snapshot for that URL, besides many other stuff that are unrelated to the topic of this video, you will also see that it has another three properties that we are going to focus in this video. Those are router params, query params and router data. And they are parsed into a key value pairs and represented as simple JavaScript objects. And the idea of this new feature is very simple. We have the state of the router params, query params and router data. We also have a reference to the component that is associated with this root. If this component has an input, the name of which one matches one of the keys from the router param, query param or router data object, then why not just provide the value from here as an input value for that component so that we don't need to inject the activated root in order to read those data. And this is exactly what the router component input binding is doing. However, this feature isn't enabled by default, so you have to activate it first. If you have already migrated to the standalone setup, and this is what I highly encourage you to do, uh, then you just have to go to the app.config.ts file and after the provided routes, uh, you have to call the following function called with component input binding. However, it is still possible to enable this feature for the ng model based Angular apps, so no worries if you came late to this standalone party. Now, right after that, the input binding will start work so that we can see it in action. For example, I have the following root and the component that will be associated with it. And I expect that when I navigate to this root, then the param entity ID will be mapped with the entity uh, ID input. The data title will be mapped with the input title and the same will be true for the description and for the query params. All right, so let's check it out and you can see that it looks like everything was bound just fine. And this is not just a static action that happens only once, no. When the corresponding root state, for example, URL parameter changes, the component input will be updated, triggering the corresponding ng on changes lifecycle hook, as you can see right here in the console log of our browser. But you might raise a great, really great question. What if the same key exists in the multiple root state slices? For example, what if the root data also has the key entity ID that overlaps the one from the, for example, params. 
which one will be mapped with the component input. Well, in this case, the values will be overridden in the following priority. The lowest priority has query params, which can be overridden by URL parameters and router data. The intermediate priority has URL params and they can be overridden only by the router data. And the router data obviously has the highest priority and its value always wins. So if we execute the following code, you can see that for the entity ID input has been picked up the value that we defined inside the data property and not the one that comes from the root params. Okay, I hope at this point you have a solid understanding how this feature is working. And now let's try to apply this knowledge to some real life use case. For example, I currently have the following root configuration with the user ID parameter and I have also the corresponding component right there. Inside the component, I inject the activated root and then I subscribe to the router params stream in order to fetch the user ID parameter. Then from this stream, I start another one that uses the value of the user ID parameter in order to fetch the corresponding uh, profile for this user and it must be very familiar because it is a very very common use case okay and now let's try to refactor it and apply this new feature so first of all i remove the user id stream and instead of that i will introduce a user id component input that will be mapped with the user id world param from this root this means that we don't need to depend on the activated root anymore, so I can simply remove it. But here is the problem, because doing so we lose reactivity, because uh, user ID isn't an observable anymore and we have to fix it. And we can fix it in two ways. If you use an Angular version that doesn't support signal inputs, then you can convert the input property into a setter plus subject pattern. So every time when the user ID input changes inside the getter, the new value will be emitted into the corresponding subject. And this subject we will be using instead of the non-existing user ID observable. And I also think that the good idea would be making this uh, input required. I think it would make a lot of sense here. And in such a way, we achieve the reactivity we had before, but now we don't depend on the router. And this makes our component a bit easier to reuse. The second approach to solve this reactivity issue would be using the signal inputs. So I can actually remove everything from here and just use the input function in order to create a required signal input. If you didn't hear yet about this brand new signal input feature in Angular, I have a dedicated video. The link to this video will appear in the top right corner so you can check it out later. All right, so now once we turn our input into a signal, we can uh, track it value changes inside the effect function and refetch profiles there. But for the async reactivity, which is exactly my case, I prefer using RxJS and fortunately we can simply convert signals into observables using the to observable helper function that comes from the Angular core RxJS interop package. In such a way I get the same effect as before but I use this modern signal based API instead. And by the way, this feature perfectly works also with lazy loading components so if we modify our use case and load the user profile component lazily, so something like that, then if we go and check, you can see that everything works very well, just out of the box and without any 
additional actions from our side all right so that was everything i would like to share with you today about this feature and if you like how i explain angular stuff so yeah, please check out my video courses for example if you would like to learn how to build complex form controls and if you would like to know in depth how angular forms are working check out my video course called advanced angular forms all the links will be in the video description and i'm pretty sure you will learn a lot from them there. Another great way to support my channel is to share this video with your colleagues and friends and leave your comments and your thoughts in the comment section right below. Otherwise, I wish you a productive week ahead guys. Thanks for watching this video until the end and see you in the next video.